you started? Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah, welcome back. Okay, guys. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. First of all, happy Independence Day to every one of you. Okay, guys. Now, in this today's class, let's begin with the muscle physiology. Okay. Now, let's begin with muscle physiology. Now, what I will be explaining you in this today's class is the structure of the muscles, different types of proteins which are present in the muscle, as well as I will be explaining you about how muscle contraction occurs. Okay, how the muscle contraction is going to occur, sir. So that I will explain you. You had a basic idea about the muscle contraction from your class 11th and 12th. Now, in this class, I will explain you little in detail things. Okay, having said that, first either they go. So, this is your muscle. Okay, this is your biceps muscle. Imagine this is my biceps muscle that I am showing you. I am just showing my biceps muscle for, for you, sir. Okay. Now, in this biceps muscle, look here. See, in this biceps muscle. Now, inside a muscle, there are so many fascicles present. I am taking one fascicle out. In a muscle, there are so many fascicles are there. This is one fascicle that I am showing you. Okay, sir. Next. Sir. Inside a fascicle, even inside a fascicle, there are muscle fibers. Okay, these are called as the muscle fibers. Inside a fascicle, there are muscle fibers. Okay, that's also good. Now, inside this muscle fiber, this is a muscle fiber. This muscle fiber is the real muscle cell. It's a myocyte. It's a real muscle cell. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Sorry. Today, I'm having a little cold. Okay, little cold, sir. Uh, till like you know uh, irritation is there but anyway now tell me inside a muscle we are having fascicles muscle fascicles inside a fascicle there are muscle fibers are present these muscle fibers are nothing but the myocytes the muscle cells sir okay inside this muscle fibers they go inside this muscle fibers there are these myofibrils present inside the muscle Fibers inside the myocytes, you are having these myofibrils. Do you know what are the myofibrils? So, the myofibrils are nothing but actin and myosin. The actin and myosin, you know, they are helping in the muscle contraction, sir. The actin as well as the myosin. Okay, same thing. Let me show you in a different way. So, this is your skeletal muscle. Now, inside a skeletal muscle, sir, inside a skeletal muscle, what do you have? The skeletal muscle it contains muscle cells that's the muscle fibers muscle fibers inside the muscle fibers inside the muscle fibers what do we have you have myofibrils what are the myofibrils i have explained you the myofibrils are nothing but actin myosin guys i hope you already know this see look here these red color things which i am pointing these core these proteins are called as myosin filaments these are called as myosin molecules Okay, now this myosin is also called as a thick filament, sir. Thick filament. Okay, now these molecules which I am highlighting right now. Okay, this molecule. Are you able to appreciate this blue color molecules which I am pointing? These blue color molecules are called as actin molecules. Okay, on both the sides, they go. These are all actins. So inside a muscle, what I am trying to put it in your mind? Inside a muscle. There are fascicles. Inside the fascicles, there are muscle fibers. Inside the muscle fibers, inside the muscle fiber, there are myofibrils. What are the myofibrils? They, they go, these are the myofibrils. Sir. The actin myosin, actin myosin, actin myosin. These are the myofibrils. Now, do you know what happens during the muscle contraction? During the muscle contraction, imagine this is the myosin, this is the actin. The actin is going to slide on the myosin. Okay, the actin is going to slide on the myosin, sir, causing muscle contraction. What exactly is the muscle contraction? 
actin will slide onto the myosin molecule so muscle contraction will occur okay so now they go. in the center there are myosins and actins actin myosin actin myosin actin myosin like this so from here so they go this is the z line sir one z line what is that z line i will explain you later here one more z line is there this is one z line and this is the other z line these are two z lines in between the two z lines this unit is called as a sarcomere okay dekho this is one sarcomere sir one sarcomere it consists of what what exactly is this sarcomere so sarcomere it includes see the middle these are what these are the myosins these are the myosins and what are these these are the actin molecules these are the actin molecules okay on this side also this is an actin see actin molecule actin molecule now this line i have said you see this line this line is called as z line so this unit is called as a sarcomere this is the functional unit of a muscle okay the functional unit of a muscle is called as a sarcomere which is present between the two z lines which includes the actin and myosin okay so edges are called as a z lines the edges are the z lines okay now in the center of the sarcomere there is one more line in the center of the sarcomere which line is present m line is present okay in the center of the sarcomere there is m line on the peripheries there are z lines okay having said that now let's write one by one important points which you should know for your exam okay let me write sir first number 1 inside the muscles what do we have okay there are muscles there are muscles inside the muscles there are fascicles there are fascicles present inside a fascicle what do you have sir inside a fascicle there are myofibrils there are myofibrils now sir what are these myofibrils the myofibrils are nothing but actin and myosin the actin and myosin sir no doubt now what is the functional unit of a muscle what is the functional unit of a muscle the functional unit of a muscle is called as sarcomere so sarcomere it is present between present right between two z lines okay sarcomere it is present between two z lines sir it is present between the two z lines okay now what else you should know sir basic understanding is sir what is a thick filament what is called as a thick filament sir so the myosin is called as a thick filament what is a thin filament sir what is a thin filament thin filament is called as actin i have shown you there will be myosin actin myosin actin myosin actin something like that okay so thin filament is called as actin thick filament is called as myosin okay now one question let me ask you sir muscle contraction the muscle contraction is it an active process or is it a passive process what do you think muscle contraction what do you think sir is it an active process or passive process it is active process it's a active process which means atp is getting broken down atp is getting broken down atp is getting broken down sir energy is involved okay energy is involved during the contraction of the muscle so this atpas activity where the atp is getting broken down the atpas activity so the atpas activity is present where where the atp will be broken down sir look the answer is this was the question asked in the exams now look at the thick filaments let me erase here you will have a better clarity sir i am zooming in now look at the myosin filament sir in the myosin filament are you able to appreciate them see dekho are you able to appreciate these heads what are they these are the myosin heads these are the myosin heads actually this myosin head imagine this is an actin this is a myosin sir okay this is a myosin this is an actin so the myosin heads from the myosin the myosin heads they will go and bind with the actin and they will cause the sliding of the actin filament over the myosin filament sir 
okay so this myosin heads they contain atpas activity they break the atp by using this energy they causes the sliding of they causes the sliding of actin filament over the myosin filament that causes the muscle contraction how it will occur i will explain you okay so look here guys completed so thick filament completed thin filament completed uh, atp is, is activity it is seen where atp is activity it is seen in the myosin heads right myosin heads atp is activity is seen in the myosin heads that's the important point next what they will ask you is sir in exam they have asked they go actin filament it is attached to which line look at it and tell me actin filament is attached to which line z line okay this actin filament they go this actin filaments they are attached to z lines okay now with the help of which protein the actin is attached to the z lines with the help of which protein that is alpha actinin right actin attachment with z line see these are all the proteins in the muscles and actually you should know them okay so actin attachment with the z line with the help of a protein called as alpha actinin okay alpha actinin with the help of alpha actinin the actin is attached to the z line okay now one more question sir to the z line to this see to to this z line not only actin is attached see actin is attached okay but myosin is also attached look sir this myosin with the help of the spring like molecule with the help of the spring like molecule the myosin it is attached to z line so what is the name of that spring like molecule okay look here it was given the spring like molecule it is called as titin okay so right myosin attachment with okay myosin attachment with z line occurs with the help of what occurs with the help of titin titin is how it is looking like it's a spring like so what is the function of this titin so titin it maintains elasticity in the muscles it maintains the elasticity in the muscles okay it maintains the elasticity in the muscles now remember in our humans okay in humans okay titin is the largest protein the largest protein which is discovered in the humans okay it's a titin sir it's the largest protein now what is titin it's called as a muscle spring sir it's a, it's like a muscle spring okay it's called as a muscle spring what it is doing it maintains the elasticity it maintains the elasticity in the muscle it's a largest protein it attaches the myosin with the z line okay next what else you should know is guys now look the myosin look at the myosin so this is the myosin right the myosin it is attached in the center with which line m line myosin in the center it is attached with the m line so with the help of which molecule myosin attached with the m line with the help of a protein called as myomycin okay right myosin attached with m line with the help of myo isin which with the help of myo isin with the help of myo isin myosin is attached to m line sir yeah okay next 
the next protein which you should know in the muscle is called as a nebulin so nebulin a kya hai what exactly is this nebulin sir so nebulin it is present along the actin first let me write and later i will show you okay it's present along the length of actin it's present along the length of actin and maintains length of the actin it maintains what length of the actin filaments sir if you ask me sir what exactly is this nebulin a kidhar hai nebulin dekho sir here in this diagram it was not shown the nebulin molecule it's not shown now in the below diagram i will show you see look at here sir nebulin see dekho nebulin what i have said you about the nebulin nebulin it is present along the length of the actin dekho this is the actin filament right thin filament appreciate this one which is there in the light color see it is there along the length of the actin here also it's present along the length of the actin it maintains the length of the actin filaments okay so nebulin is also completed okay nebulin is also completed guys so right nebulin it's present along the length of the actin it maintains the length of the actin filaments so what i have discussed with you i have discussed important proteins that is alpha actinin i have discussed completed i have discussed about the titan i have discussed about the myomycin and I have discussed about the nebulin so these four are completed these four are completed important proteins the structural proteins sir these are the structural proteins okay which are present in the muscle which are present in the sarcomere after this i want to know i want you to know the proteins which are present in the muscle membrane sarcolemma okay what exactly is sarcolemma the muscle membrane okay now look here proteins present in thank you part thank you part sorry proteins present in sarco lemma okay now i will show you them sir i will show you i will show you an image also there you will understand better sir look here now imagine this is a muscle membrane okay this is a muscle cell membrane sir that's a muscle cell membrane okay now in this muscle cell membrane there are certain integral proteins present okay there are certain integral proteins present integral proteins means they are present throughout the cell membrane from in to out from in to out these are the integral proteins okay and there are certain peripheral proteins present in the muscle cell membrane there are certain integral proteins see these are the integral proteins ips and there are certain peripheral proteins so what are the integral proteins and what are the peripheral proteins that i will explain you now okay now the first of all let me write uh, let me uh, write the proteins here later i will show you later i will show you first which proteins first protein which i want you to know is called as the dystrophin okay dystrophin sir dystrophin second one is syntrophin syntrophin dystrophin syntrophin next one is called as a dystroglycan okay dystro dystroglycan next fourth one is called as a sarcoglycan sarcoglycan and last one final one is called as a sarco span okay sarco span sir so these are the proteins which are there in the sarcolemma in the muscle membrane in the membrane of a muscle imagine the cell membrane of a muscle these five proteins are present dystrophin syntrophin dystroglycan sarcoglycan and sarcospan which of them are integral proteins which of them are peripheral proteins i will show you okay in image you have to tell me whether they are integral proteins or peripheral proteins you have to explain okay first look at this image 
सर दिस इज द मजल मेम्ब्रेन देखो दिस इज द मजल सेल मेम्ब्रेन ओके दिस इज द मजल सेल मेम्ब्रेन दिस इज आउटसाइड द सेल दिस इज इनसाइड द सेल आउटसाइड एज वेल एज इनसाइड नाउ देखो इन द मजल there is this violet color protein sir violet color protein this is a one single protein violet color thing now it's a integral protein right it's a integral protein okay it's an integral protein sir why because it's present throughout the cell membrane it's even extending outside that's alpha subunit and beta subunit but it's a single protein sir so what is the name of this protein dystroglycan okay so dystroglycan and these proteins sir alpha beta gamma delta subunits what are they they are also integral proteins so these are sarcoglycan so dystroglycan is there sarcoglycan is there so dystroglycan and sarcoglycan they are integral proteins right dystroglycan it's a integral protein sarcoglycan is integral protein and one more thing let me show you look here so there is one more protein which is present over here this is called as sarcospan sir this is a sarcospan so sarcospan is also an integral protein it is present in the cell membrane okay throughout the cell membrane it is present okay so sarcospan it is also an integral protein so what are the three integral proteins that i want you to know the three integral proteins are dystroglycan sarcoglycan and sarcospan then where is this dystrophin present and where is this syntrophin sir where are this dystrophin and syntrophin present okay let me show you them where exactly they are see look dystrophin okay dystrophin here yeah. now tell me so dystrophin is it present on one side of the cell membrane or present within the cell membrane is it an integral protein no it is not an integral protein it is present it is attached to one side of the cell membrane inside of the cell membrane it is attached to the inner leaflet of the membrane okay dekho this is the dystrophin it is coming like this coming like this and it is attached to dystroglycans so this is not an integral protein this is a peripheral protein it's a peripheral protein in the same way on this side syntrophins sir syntrophins so dekho these are the syntrophin molecules okay syntrophins sir syntrophins are also peripheral proteins okay so now let's write here so dystrophin it's a peripheral protein syntrophin is also a peripheral protein both the dystrophin and syntrophin are peripheral proteins in the sarcolemma or in the muscle membrane okay you understood next what else you should know for your exams so first concentrate on the dystrophin this is very much important i hope you have studied this even your class 11th and 12th it will come sir have you ever heard about it is a uh, disorder called as dmd duchenne's muscular dystrophy Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, sir. Have you ever heard about it? Look, this dystrophin is there, right? Look, so it's a peripheral protein. Okay, it is a peripheral protein of the cell membrane. Okay, good. Now, this dystrophins, where they are attached, they are attached to this cytoskeletal filaments. You know the cytoskeleton, okay? You know the cytoskeleton, right? Microtubules, microfilaments, intermediary filaments. We have discussed. There, I have discussed with you actin. filamentous actin it's a microfilament now they go dystrophin it is attached with the actin inside the cell at the end of the day what i am trying to put it to your mind is dystrophin it gives a tensile strength to the muscle sir okay it gives the muscle a tensile strength especially the cell membrane it gives a tensile strength to the muscle it maintains the shape and structure of the muscle let me write here dystrophin it is attached with what in the cell within the cell dystrophin it is attached with actin cytoskeletal actin okay cytoskeletal actin sir okay it's attached with the cytoskeletal actin okay then it gives what dystrophin it gives it gives tensile strength so don't confuse this actin with the like we have discussed about actin myosin in the sarcomere that actin is different this actin is different okay don't confuse so tensile strength 
to muscle tensile strength to the muscle now having said that now this dystrophin if it is absent in a person because of some gene mutation okay because of a gene mutation dmd dystrophin gene mutation if there is complete absence complete absence or completely absent dystrophin is not there in the muscles imagine there is a baby imagine i am a baby where there is complete absence of the dystrophin dystrophin is not there that will cause a disease called as Duchenne's muscular dystrophy that will cause a disease called as what Duchenne's muscular dystrophy sir now in, the, in this disease Duchenne's muscular dystrophy tell me what about the muscles the muscles are going to be weak or strong weak muscles sir. the muscles are going to be weak weaker muscles are going to be seen now this baby imagine there is a baby with the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy now, when you ask this baby to sit on, like, you no, know, to squat the baby, like, you no, know, she is now sitting like this, okay, with, uh, like, you know, the squatting position, you know, right, he is going to sit in a squatting position. Now, when you ask this person or this baby with the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy to stand up, okay, to stand up, he is having a weak muscles in his thighs and legs, uh, so he cannot simply stand like you and me, okay, he cannot simply stand like that, so he will use his upper extremities he will take the support like this okay he will take the support like this he will take the support ground support and he will stand sir. so this is called as gover sign this is called as gover's sign so now tell me gover sign is present in which disease Duchenne's muscular dystrophy Duchenne's muscular dystrophy what is absent dystrophin protein is absent what is dystrophin dystrophin is a peripheral protein attached with the cytoskeletal actin it gives the tensile strength to the muscle okay tensile strength to the muscle these are the points which i want you to next after that what they can ask you in your exam is sarcoglycan sir okay sarcoglycan this is also asked sir what happens if this sarcoglycan if it is defective so i am just like you know Telling you which questions has been asked already and what are the important points. Sir, in the sarcoglycan, what is sarcoglycan? I have shown you, it's an integral protein. Okay, let me show you one more time for this one, sir, this blue color things alpha, beta, gamma, delta subunits. These are the sarcoglycans. Sir, if the sarcoglycans, if they are defective, it will cause which disease? It's going to cause a condition called as limb girdles. Okay, it's going to cause which disease? It's going to cause limb girdle muscular dystrophy. Okay, about these diseases, you will study in detail in your MBBS. Now, in physiology, what I am telling you is, sir, sarcoglycan is an integral protein in the muscle membrane. If that sarcoglycan, if it is a defective, it will cause a condition called as the limb girdles, especially these are the girdles, right? These are the girdles, pelvic girdle. Okay, these are the shoulders, like you know, the joints. So, limb girdle, muscular dystrophy is going to be seen due to defect in sarcoglycan. Okay, so at the end of the day, please answer my questions. What are the proteins which are present in the muscle membrane the proteins which are present in the muscle membrane are sir dystrophin syntrophin dystroglycan sarcoglycan and sarcospan out of which dystrophin and syntrophin are the peripheral proteins but all other are integral proteins okay now after this i have to explain you about the regulatory proteins hey sir what exactly are the regulatory proteins Okay, I have explained you about the structural proteins, actin, myosin, alpha actin, and titan, myomycin, nebulin, completed. After that, I have explained you some important proteins in the muscle cell membrane. That's also completed. After this, now let me explain you about some important regulatory proteins. So, what exactly are these regulatory proteins? Okay, now you should understand. Guys, let me show you an actin filament, sir. For example, for easy understanding, I am showing you. This is actin filament. Okay, let's see. This is the actin filament, sir. Okay? Actin, myosin, you know, right? Actin, myosin, actin, myosin, sarcomere. This is the actin filament. 
Now, actin filament, it contains the active sites. There are some sites called as active sites. Okay, there are the sites called as active sites, sir. Right? Active sites. Now, normally, do you know? Actually, myosin heads, I have explained you. The myosin head will come and bite with the active site and it will push, it will slide the actin, sir. Helping in the muscle contraction. These are the active sites. Normally, during resting phase, during resting, do you know what happens? All these active sites are covered. Active sites are not exposed. Active sites sir, are in covered state. They are covered, sir. Who is covering them? This molecule. There is this one molecule who is totally... Let me put it this way. Like this. The active sites are totally covered. There is a curtain. Okay. Try to understand like that. Okay. There is a curtain which is over the active sites. This molecule, it is called as a tropomyosin. So, what is tropomyosin? Tropomyosin covers the active sites on actin. This is a tropomyosin. It is attached with one more protein cell. Try to understand. I am just showing you in a simple ways. So, the tropomyosin, it attached with one more protein. This is called as troponin C. Okay, troponin C. Okay, let me write here. Troponin C, sir. Okay, troponin C. Normally, that calcium, okay, the calcium during muscle contraction, during muscle contraction, I am telling you. During muscle contraction, Calcium will come and bind with the troponin C. So now this troponin C, do you know what it will do? Troponin C, it moves away the tropomyosin. It moves away the tropomyosin so that active sites are exposed. When the active sites are exposed, now myosin head with the help of ATP, by breaking down the ATP myosin head, will go and bind with the active site, causes the filament. Okay, causes the sliding filament. Uh, like you know, uh, uh, causes the sliding of the active filament over the myosin filament, sliding, causing the muscle contraction, sir. That I will explain you. We will step by step that I will explain you. But now, here I am talking about two regulatory proteins, regulatory proteins of muscle contraction. What are these regulatory proteins that I am discussing here? Is troponin C. It binds with what? It binds with calcium. And also, Tropomyosin, it's a regulating what? It, it's, it's closing the active sites on actin. Okay, during normal, during normal rest, restful phase, tropomyosin is covering the active sites. Okay? Now, after this, what I should show you is how exactly muscle contraction occurs. Okay, how exactly the muscle contraction is going to occur, sir. Now, for that, let me draw that image for you, small image. Sir, imagine this is the muscle membrane. I am drawing the muscle cell membrane, sir. Cell membrane of the muscle. So, that is the muscle, muscle, myo, uh, muscle fiber or my, uh, myocytes I have explained you. This is one muscle uh, like, you know, cell, sir. See? This is the cell membrane which is coming into the cytoplasm. The muscle membrane, it is actually invaginating into the cytoplasm. Okay? Again, this is the muscle cell membrane. It is coming like this. Again, in one more place, the cell membrane, it is invaginating into the cytoplasm. This is inside. That is cytoplasm. Sir. This is outside. Okay, TK. Now, what exactly is this that I am drawing? This is muscle cell or myocyte. The muscle cell or the muscle fiber. You can say. Okay. Now, inside this cell, okay, inside this cell, what do you have? Sir, inside this cell, you know it, there are myofibrils, myofibrils, actin, myosin, actin, myosin. They go. Inside this cell, these are the myosins that I am drawing. They are extending along the cell, sir, but I am showing in one single place. Okay. These are the myosins. What are these? These are the actins, like this. Here also actin. So actin myosin are present. Okay. 
This is the Z line. These are the Z lines, you know it. Now, let's keep this side apart. Okay, for a few minutes, just keep it aside, sir. Okay. Size. Uh, let's keep it aside for some time. Now, let's first concentrate. Let's first concentrate on the important points, like some important structures I want you to know. So, this is the cell membrane, right? This is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is actually invaginating into the cell cell. So, this structure which I have drawn here, this is called as, okay, this is called as a T-tubule. This is called as what? T-tubule. So, this is called as a T-tubule, right? Now, here inside the cell, we are having... <laughs> Just give me one minute, guys. Okay. Now, inside the cell, what are these? These are the L-tubules. Okay. So, I have shown you what is a T-tubule. T-tubule is nothing but a cell membrane that is getting invaginated into the cytoplasm. This structure, which I am showing you, this is called as L-tubule. Now you will get it out. Sir, what is this L tubule, sir? T tubule, okay, it's a cell membrane. What is L tubule? Cell tubule, it is nothing but sarcoplasmic reticulum. See, you know the endoplasmic reticulum, right? Cell organelle. Like that, this is sarco endoplasmic reticulum, sir. Inside a muscle, the endoplasmic reticulum is called as the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So, this is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So, in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, there is highest concentration of calcium present, sir. There is so there is so much amount of calcium present here. Well, lots and lots of calcium is present here. Now, in the LT view, this is a terminal region. See, they go. This is a terminal region. It is called as okay. That terminal region is called as what? It is called as cisterna. This terminal region, it is called as what? It is called as a cisterne. Terminal region, it is called as a cisterne. Okay. T tubule is there, L tubule is there. T tubule, L tubule. L tubule is nothing but the sarcoendoplasmic reticulum. It contains lots and lots of calcium. Okay. Take it. Now. Look here, on the T-tubule, okay, on the T-tubule, I want you to know there is one channel present, sir, one important protein present. Take. This protein that I am drawing on the T-tubule, this protein, it is called as DHPR channel, DHPR channel. Now, you can ask me, what is this DHPR channel, sir? What exactly is this DHPR? This DHPR means dihydro pyridine calcium channel okay dhpr dihydropyridine calcium channel it's a dhpr just remember what I, what exactly it is i will explain you what is the function of it okay it's called as a dhpr dihydropyridine calcium channel okay dhpr is present on t tubule now next let me show you with a different color so this channel which i am showing you on the l tubule there is one more channel which is present on the l tubule sir okay i have drawn one more channel which is present on the L-tubule. So, this channel which I have drawn, okay, it is called as R Y R. R Y R, which means Ranodine Receptor. Okay, Ranodine Receptor. Ranodine Receptor. Simply, we will call it as R Y R. If you can remember R Y R, that's enough. DHPR is present on the T-tubule. R Y R is present on the L-tubule. Okay, DHPR, RYR. Both these channels are important for the exam and for understanding purpose also. DHPR is there, RYR is there. 
ठीक है ओके गुड सो नाउ लेट मी टेल यू वॉट एग्जैक्टली हैपन्स ड्यूरिंग मजिल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन सर ऑल अवर मजिल्स विल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट only when action potentials are coming or i should say all our muscles are innervated by the neurons nerves muscles are going to be innervated with the neurons and motor neurons when the motor neurons are firing then only it will cause muscle contraction what does i mean by this let me explain it okay see dekho there is this one neuron this is a neuron sir alpha motor neuron in the in the नर्व फिजियोलॉजी आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अल्फा मोटर न्यूरॉन्स विल बी देयर सो दिस को देखो हियर दिस इज अ नर्व टर्मिनल दिस इज अ न्यूरॉन व्हिच न्यूरॉन अल्फा मोटर न्यूरॉन ओके इट्स अल्फा मोटर न्यूरॉन नाउ इट इज गेटिंग डीपोलराइज्ड मींस एक्शन पोटेंशियल इज कमिंग नर्व इंपल्स आर इलेक्ट्रिकल इंपल्स इज कमिंग डू यू नो व्हाट इट विल डू नाउ सर दिस अल्फा मोटर न्यूरॉन्स दे विल release a neurotransmitter called as acetylcholine okay they are releasing what they are releasing a neurotransmitter chemical called as acetylcholine now this junction see it's a neuron right it's a neuron what is this one this is a muscle so what is this junction between this junction it is called as a neuromuscular junction okay neuromuscular junction so who is getting released into the neuromuscular junction acetylcholine acetylcholine is getting released into the neuromuscular junction through okay now now so this acetylcholine what it will do i will explain you okay what this acetylcholine will do sir so this acetylcholine will actually act on a receptor sir there is a receptor on the muscle the name of this receptor is called as nm receptor okay nm nicotinic n for nicotinic receptor which is present on the muscle <coughs> sorry so that's a nicotinic receptor okay nicotinic receptor now this acetylcholine it will come and bind with this receptor now what happens is <coughs> sorry pray god cold so nicotinic receptor is present on the muscle cell next now the acetylcholine is coming and binding with the nicotinic receptor now like what happens is now this impulse it is transmitted to the muscle now the muscle membrane which i should say okay for in detail for first year first year students right let me tell you what happens when this nicotinic receptor is activated when this nicotinic receptor is activated sir the sodium will come into the cell sir okay sodium will come into the cell sodium ions will come into the cell okay sodium ions will start to come into the cell so sodium is a positive charge so as the positive charge came into the cell what happens cell membrane will become depolarized now became plus sodium comes into the cell so this muscle membrane it is getting depolarized okay this muscle membrane getting depolarized t tubule is getting depolarized now when the muscle membrane is getting depolarized now it will activate which channel you should tell me it is activating which channel first it is activating the dhpr channel the dhpr channel is activated dhpr channel is activated when the dhpr channel is activated see dhpr dihydropyridine receptor channel calcium channel when the dihyd uh, when the dhpr channel is activated do you know what it will do once it is activated it actually it's going to have a hand sir okay it's actually going to have a hand a unit sub unit okay hand like sub unit now it will go and it will open it will open the rvr channel okay now mechanically mechanically for example imagine this is the dhpr okay this dhpr channel it will go and it will open the rvr channel so first muscle is getting depolarized When the muscle is depolarized the dhpr channel is activated the dhpr channel mechanically going to open the rvr channels so rvr channel is open okay the rvr channel is open now now when the rvr channel is open okay this rvr channel is open now tell me who is going to come out of the rvr channel sir calcium lots and lots of calcium is there inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum now the gates are open now this calcium it will start to come out sir 
Okay, so calcium where it is coming? Coming into the cytoplasm. Now, for the first time, calcium is coming into the cytoplasm. Otherwise, calcium is not there in the cytoplasm. So, calcium is not there in the cytoplasm, sir. Now, calcium is coming into the cytoplasm. Now, you know what this calcium will do now. Sir, I have explained you about the regulatory proteins. Okay, what this calcium is going to do? So, the calcium, it will go and it will bind with troponin C. Calcium will bind with the troponin C. When the calcium, when it is binding with the troponin C, okay, calcium is binding with the troponin C, what happens? So, the troponin C will move the tropomyosin away. Okay, troponin C will move tropomyosin tropomyosin away from active sites. Okay, now the tropomyosin is going to move away from the active sites. Now, what happened to the active sites? Now, active sites are active on actin. Sir. Active sites and act the active sites and actin are exposed. Exposed. Now, when the active sites are exposed, what myosin will do? Myosin is going to sit calm now? No. Myosin heads, especially myosin heads, immediately will go on by with the actin and causes sliding of the actin filaments. Okay. So, that's how muscle contraction occurs. Okay. That's how muscle contraction occurs. I will show you that also. Okay. Now, you understood, right? What exactly is happening? Sir, when you have decided, you have decided to contract a muscle. So, alpha motor neuron will, will be activated to that muscle. Alpha motor neuron releases the acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction. In the neuromuscular junction, the acetylcholine is going to cause the depolarization in the muscle membrane. The depolarization of the muscle membrane will activate the DHPR channels. The DHPR channels open the RVR channels. When the RVR channels are opened, the calcium is going to leak into the cytoplasm. The calcium will bind with the troponin C. The troponin C moves the tropomyosin away from the active sites. Active sites are exposed. Myosin heads will come and bind with the active sites. With the help of ATP, they will cause the contraction of the muscle. Okay. Imagine muscle contraction completed, sir. Muscle contraction khatam ho gaya. Completed. When the muscle contraction is completed, so the calcium whatever have came into the cell, this calcium whatever have came into the cell, where it should go? It should again go back into the LTP unit. It should have to go back into the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. How it will occur? Let me tell you. Sir, on this cell, for the understanding purpose, I am just erasing these things. Okay. Calcium, I am just erasing the calcium. Okay. Just let me erase these things. Okay. Okay. I'm just erasing the thing, sir. So, once the muscle contraction is completed, the calcium should not be there in the cytoplasm. The calcium should have to go back. So, they go. There is these channels. There are these channels. Okay. There is one more protein present over here. This red color protein. Do you know what is the name of this red color protein? The red color protein, it is called as cerca. What exactly is cerca, sir? Cerca means sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum calcium atpas let me write here sarcoplasmic endoplasmic reticulum atpas by using the atp you see you know one thing sir already inside the L tubule that's the cerca uh, already inside the L tubule sarco endoplasmic reticulum okay sarcoplasmic reticulum lots and lots of calcium is there tons and tons of calcium is there sir so now what you are doing you are moving the calcium from low concentration to high concentration you are moving the calcium from low concentration to high concentration now this calcium have to again go back into the L tubule. So, as the substance is moving from low concentration to high concentration, you have to use the energy, active transport. So, now tell me, Serka, what it is doing? Serka, is it helping in contraction of muscle or relaxation of muscle? Serka is helping in the relaxation of the muscle. It, 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 it causes muscle relaxation. The calcium is going back. Okay, the calcium is going back into the L tubule. So, that calcium is not available for muscle contraction. 
so muscle relaxation so cerca is a relaxing protein okay cerca is a relaxing protein sir that you should never forget cerca is a relaxing protein okay right next what else i should teach you dekho how exactly muscle contraction occurs step by step okay what how the actin is going as uh, how the myosin heads are going to go on bind with the actin that i will explain you now in an image i will explain you okay just give me one minute guys i will show you that image it's not here let, let me open one more pdf let me raise these things okay now look here how exactly what is the step by step okay step by step what is the first step sir see the active site on actin is exposed as the calcium binds with the troponin i have explained you calcium is released calcium goes and binds with the troponin c when troponin c binds with the calcium it moves the tropomyosin away from the active site so active sites are exposed now they go this is the active site for example see they, these are all these are the active sites these are the active sites on actin okay now what happens now look now the myosin head myosin head when the active sites are exposed now myosin head immediately takes an atp breaks down that atp into adp and inorganic phosphate now one atp is getting broken down the atp is getting broken down into adp and inorganic phosphate adp and inorganic phosphate now myosin head is ready now by using this energy okay by using this energy now immediately see the myosin head forms a cross bridge with the actin cross bridge means see now this is a cross link right now it's a link now immediately the myosin head is going and binding with the active site goes and binds with the active site okay but still it is carrying adp and this phosphate still adp and phosphate are there in the myosin head itself adp is broken down already now it went and bind there okay already one adp molecule is broken down but still it is having adp and inorganic phosphate okay adp and inorganic phosphate are there now so far any contraction occurred no contraction okay now what happens see cross bridge formation occurred sir cross bridge formation occurred after this cross bridge formation now what should happen i have explained you see now imagine this is the myosin head the myosin head went and bind with the active site the myosin head we have gone and bind with the active site like this okay now it have to pull it have to pull the thin filament so see the, now the myosin head is bending and pulling okay see this is called as a power stroke power stroke which means the myosin head is pulling the thin filament over the thick filament okay <laughs> this power stroke so when power stroke will occur sir so power stroke requires any new atp does power stroke requires any new atp no power stroke does not require any new atp when power stroke will occur sir see due to the release of adp and inorganic phosphate okay due to the release of adp and inorganic phosphate now power stroke is occurring the myosin head it is bending like this the myosin head is bending like this pulling the thin filament over the actin sir pulling the thin filament actin filament over the myosin so now this was the question asked in pg exam this is the question asked in the pg exam sir okay that to the high like you know ini ct exam aims exam this was the question asked so power stroke occurs during okay power stroke occurs during when power stroke occurs power stroke occurs 
during the release of adp and phosphate see adp and phosphate are getting released like most of the students will think during power stroke atp is getting utilized no no new atp is getting utilized simply due to the release of adp and phosphate now myosin head will bend like this causing the power stroke okay completed sir now one power stroke completed so now myosin head have gone there and it have pull the thin filament but now myosins are not satisfied now this myosin it have to detach it first it have to detach and it have to go and bind with the new active site for further sliding so now this cross bridge detachment if you want to detach the cross bridge if you want to detach this already existing cross bridge you need one more atp sir now new atp is required this is the question asked in the exam okay see now detachment is occurring cross bridge detachment so a new molecule of atp it will come and attach with the myosin head okay causing the cross bridge to detach detachment of the cross bridge requires one more atp molecule so cross bridge is going to detach okay by taking that atp uh, by taking that atp cross bridge is going to be detached sir okay so that the last one what what is that see atp came and bind right now that atp is going to be again broken down into adp and phosphate which returns the myosin to crop position again normal position now after coming to normal position what it will do again it will go on bind with the new active site okay so it will continue so it's going to continue it's the same thing now the what i want you to know for your exam okay for your exam the important point what they will ask is sir power stroke okay power stroke let me put it here power stroke when it will occur sir power stroke occurs during release of adp and inorganic phosphate power stroke occurs during adp release of the adp and inorganic phosphate next cross bridge detachment cross bridge detachment requires new atp cross bridge detachment requires new atp molecule that's it clear okay so i have explained you how muscle contraction occurred i have explained you different different proteins sir just if you go through a recap okay sorry so now if you have a recap from where we have started i have started with the just structural proteins what are the different types of proteins which are present in the sarcomere the actin filaments myosin filaments myomycin alpha actinin titin okay these are the things which are present now my question to you look okay look so the thin filaments are going to slide over the thick filaments right during muscle contraction the sarcomere is going to contract the sarcomere is going to contract okay now what happened to the distance between the two z lines during muscle contraction muscle is contracting what happens to the distance between the two z lines decreases the two z lines right that's the mcq during muscle contraction right let me write here during muscle contraction the distance between between two z lines decreases okay the distance between two z lines is going to decrease okay next look guys in this image okay <laughs> i have to explain you what is i band and what is a band okay the basic things are like questions won't be asked in the exam but 
as you are in your first year you can know this okay see a in i band i for isotropic sir isotropic okay isotropic why it is isotropic isotropic means same isotropic under light it will be like you know giving one kind sir it's isotropic i i band for isotropic band why it is isotropic because see it is having only which filaments active filaments see that is not active active filaments what are all these sir these are all active filaments right because these are all active filaments on that side as well as this side these are all active filaments so in i band there are only only actin filaments present okay actin filaments are going to be present next so what are present in a band a band for anisotropic band okay a band for anisotropic band they go in a band so from here to here in a band sir actin is there as well as myosin is there actin myosin actin myosin okay actin myosin both are there so as there are both filaments it is an isotropic not say okay isotropic as well as an isotropic band okay now the question which was asked in the exam is sir during muscle contraction what happened to i band length of the i band what happened to i band length and what happened to a band length see the actins are going to come so the actin is going to slide over the myosin look here in this image the actin is going to slide over the myosin so will there be any change in the a band length will there be any change in the a band length think logically and tell me no there is no change in the a band length but what happened to the i band length i band the i band is going to decrease i band length is going to decrease but a band length doesn't change okay so i band decreases but a band remains same okay i band remains same sir simple completed so they will ask z lines the distance between the two z lines decreases i band length also decreases but a band remains the same remains the same now what else you should know is guys look here during muscle contraction the dhpr channel first dhpr channel is activated muscle membrane depolarized activated the dhpr channel is activated now what is going to do it is going to mechanically open the rvr channels i have explained you this process is called as so first electrical activity occurs sir depolarization so first electrical activity so it is called as electro first electrical activity activates the dhpr channels dhpr channels mechanically opens the rvr channel so this is called as electro mechanical coupling okay electro mechanical coupling sir so electro mechanical coupling is seen during muscle contraction where the dhpr channels are opening the rvr channels okay this is also completed next for exam purpose Okay, in exam, these questions are asked. Sir, RVR channels. Look here, RVR channels. Sir, RVR channels. They are the gateways for the calcium. They open the entry. They are the op. They are the channels. Sir. They are the ones which allows the movement of calcium into the cells. They are the gates. Now, in certain condition, there is a condition in which RVR channel is open continuously. It is open, sir. Okay, the RVR channel is open continuously. that is called as gain of function this is a gain of function mutation okay it's a mutated no problem mutation there is a gain of function mutation for rvr channels now when rvr channels are continuously opened now more and more calcium is going to come into the cell more calcium will cause more muscle contraction continuous muscle contraction so that disease is called as okay malignant hyper thermia malignant hyper thermia there is a disease condition called as a malignant hyper thermia in which there is a gain of function mutation for the rvr channels 
more calcium will come into the cell more muscle contraction okay now in this condition if they ask you what is the treatment how you can do the treatment how we can do the treatment sir you know it sir rvr channel sir opened now what you need to do you need to close the rvr channels you have to close them you have to close so rvr channel blocker rhinodine receptor blocker is used what is that rvr receptor blocker rhinodine receptor blocker it is called as dantrolene sodium there is a drug called as dantrolene sodium it blocks the rvr channels it blocks the rvr channels so the problem is going to be treated the malignant hyperthermia that problem is going to be treated sir okay so with this the important topics about the muscle contraction how muscle is going to be contracted it's completed sir okay muscle contraction topic is completed the basic basic thing what you need to know before entering into the mbbs and the first year the basic points i have i have discussed okay now important points i will explain you see what you need to know okay see the different types of proteins what is alpha actinin what is the nebulin what is the myomycin what is the titin okay structural proteins <laughs> okay the structural proteins you should know sir what else you have to know about the regulatory proteins what are the two regulatory proteins that i have explained troponin as well as a tropomyosin after that what else you should know the proteins in the <laughs> sorry the proteins in the cell membrane the proteins in the sarcolemma what are they integral proteins and peripheral proteins the defect in those proteins and absence of those proteins will lead to different types of diseases like duchenne muscular dystrophy and limb girdle muscle dystrophy now after that you should know in detail about the electromechanical coupling and how the calcium is going to be released what that calcium is doing how muscle contraction occurs the sliding filament theory what happened to i band a band and what happened to the z lines that will be discussed in the sliding filament theory the sliding of the thin filament over the thick filament okay how power stroke occurs how cross bridges are going to be detached that you should know sir so if you know this much that will be enough for the basic the basic okay understanding will be good okay guys i hope the class is uh, helpful in the next class i will discuss about the blood sir i will discuss some important points about the blood okay hope the class is helpful okay you will get this pdf in the telegram group hope the class is helpful see you in the next class thank you guys see in the next class